I've been coding for almost 15 years now, and here are five things that I wish I knew about coding before I began. Before I get started, I'd like to thank Notion for sponsoring this video. The first thing that I wish I knew is that learning never ends. So learning how to learn is the highest leverage thing that you can do as an engineer. A lot of people when they start writing code have this idea that eventually they'll be able to just sit down, not use any reference material, not Google anything, and just spit out code at the speed of thought. And when I was an intern, I thought this was true. And I was working with some amazing senior developers and I realized that they were referencing documentation and searching things more often than I was. And they were getting much more done. And over the years, what I've realized is that learning is the most valuable skill that any engineer can have. Being able to look at a problem, break it down, and then search for how to solve it is immensely powerful. So learn how to learn and throw away this idea that eventually one day you'll know everything. That's just not true of software engineering. And ultimately, I wish that I knew this more when I had started out. Rather than reading manuals or courses thinking that, okay, when I'm done this, I'll have a grasp on Python as a language. What you really should be doing is looking at problems, saying, hmm, I don't know how to do that, and then breaking it down and learning how to solve it. If you get really good at breaking down problems and learning how to solve them, you can do almost anything with software engineering. It's so cool. And so learning how to learn is the highest leverage thing that you can do as a coder. Speaking about learning, this is a great time to talk about the sponsor of this video, Notion. I've used Notion for many, many years. It's the primary place where I store all of my documents and all of my notes online. I've loved their core offering for a really long time, but in the past year, they've introduced some really amazing AI features that in my opinion, have taken the product to the next level. Let me share with you an example of what they can do. So let's say that you find this piece of code online that you don't really understand how it works and it's not really a clear explanation. With Notion, you can copy that code into a code block and then ask Notion AI to explain it to you. And what's really cool about this is that then that's stored as a document. So if you organize this right, everything that you're learning is taking notes as you go. And so you don't lose it. You can reference it back when you can think, oh yeah, what was that piece of code? What, what happened there again? You can go back and you can find it. And you do that with the AI partner, which I think is really, really cool. So if you wanna get started with Notion today for free and unlock the power of Notion AI for only $10 a month, which I think speaking candidly is a pretty good deal, then you can check out the link in my bio. Lesson two, technology is always changing, so use a technology that has been battle tested. There's always something cutting edge that promises to solve all the problems of the previous popular language. And it gets really hot and it's really popular on Twitter and on YouTube and on social media. And you think, hey, this is the way, this is the future. And then in about six months, you realize, ah, there's a reason they were doing it the way they did it before. That's not to say that we should all be using .NET. Technology does move forward but it's often in a pattern of two steps forward, one step back. And when you're a beginner, you don't have the skills to identify when it's a step forward or a step back. Most seniors don't even possess this capability. I surely don't. And so with that in mind, when it comes to learning a technology, learning a language, I'd really recommend that you go with something that has been battle tested and has extensive documentation. In general, this will mean learning Python, JavaScript, one of the really big programming languages, and frameworks and patterns within that. So you'll learn Node.js and you'll learn Express. And then as you gain mastery in these things, then you can build on them and go to the cutting edge and say, maybe I'll try this thing out and see if it's good or not. But sticking with battle-tested technology is, I think, a really wise thing to do as a beginner. And this is especially true because a lot of the, the problems that the cutting edge technology is solving just won't be a problem to you as a beginner. You probably won't have hundreds of thousands of concurrent users in your app. So things like slight performance increases and latency won't matter as much to you as they would to an engineering organization with hundreds of engineers. So focus on the big things, learn the battle-tested technology, and then eventually step into the cutting edge. Lesson three, your code will always look bad in retrospect. Don't let that stop you from shipping. There's kind of two famous memes in the software engineering community. One is the engineer looking at some code in the code base saying, which idiot wrote this? And then realizing that they wrote it three months ago. This happens to every single developer over time. There's another meme in the startup community that I think is just wise advice. And that is if you're not embarrassed by the first version of the product that you have shipped, you shipped it too late. What often happens with people is that their skill and their taste diverge a little bit. So if you start building apps, your taste is gonna be pretty high because you've been using apps your whole life, like Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and so on, that have literally thousands of engineers pouring over every single detail. 
And so then you make an app and you think, oh, this thing sucks because it doesn't live up to that standard. Your taste is way above your skill, but you always want this to be true. You always want your taste to exceed your skill because then you have a direction to push your skill towards. So perfection is really the enemy of progress when it comes to writing code. Your goal should be to build momentum and to increase your skills. So accept some imperfections, understand that you probably won't be shipping a pixel perfect app on day one and use that as motivation to get better not as something pushing you back from ever getting started in the first place. Lesson four is don't be defensive. Let other people roast your work. A lot of craftspeople associate their worth with the worth of their work. And it makes sense, right? You put in a lot of energy on something. Maybe you spent hundreds of hours coding something, and then someone comes in and they say, oh, this could be better, this could be better, this could be better, you did this wrong. And it's really hard to put that ego aside and say, yeah, you're right actually, because you spent so much time working on it and this person just came in and in 30 seconds said, oh, what you spent hundreds of hours on isn't good enough. But that's not really what they're saying, right? They're trying to help you. When you're super zoomed in on something, it's really easy to make mistakes, to miss things. Oftentimes those things are really obvious to others who are zoomed out and have more context. So don't let ego get in the way of improvement. It makes sense that you're proud of what you've made, but understand that it could be better. Of course it could be. And if someone's coming in and giving you good faith feedback on how it could be better, you should be thanking them. They took energy out of their way to make you better. And now in the future, you're going to be better because of it. Ultimately, criticism from others is one of the best ways to learn. Some of my highest velocities of growth in terms of learning have come when I've been working closely with senior engineers who would read all of my code and they would roast it. They would say, oh, you could do this better, you could do this better, you could do this better, and I wouldn't be allowed to merge my code in until I fixed it. I learned a ton doing this. And yeah, it's uncomfortable at first because you're like, oh, I'm a, I'm a good programmer, I know what I'm doing. Let me just put my code in here. But you realize that they're right and they're helping you and you're much better off because of it. The final lesson that I want to share with you is to remember to have fun and be playful. Some of my favorite memories with code are late nights hacking around with my friends, making something that no one in the world would use, but was just a cool thing. I used to do a ton of hackathons in high school where we would stay up for an entire weekend just building something. And it was fun and playful. And I think that that gets lost sometimes. Computer science is a really difficult thing to study. Software engineering is a highly competitive field, but that doesn't mean that it has to be serious all of the time. Most of the great software that has ever been written has an element of fun and whimsy to it. Ultimately, if you're going to be at this for a long period of time, it needs to be sustainable. You need to enjoy your work. So make it fun. That doesn't mean that you should be messing around or doing stupid things, but coding shouldn't feel like a chore to you. It is creative problem solving and you can put emphasis on the creative side sometimes. So those are five things that I wish that I had known when I was starting coding, but they're lessons that apply to me today still. I have to remind myself of these on an ongoing basis. So I hope that this helped you in some way. I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to subscribe if you did. I'll see you again soon. Bye.